Hello students, today we are going to talk about controls that we use in experimental research. What is controlled? In order to make experimental design both internally and externally valid, a check has to be put on the sources of error affecting dependent variable. Now why do we have to put the check? Because a, uh, it is necessary to establish to have uh, experimental research which is valid. In order to make the experimental research design both internally and externally valid, we have to control the sources of error as much as possible. In the previous classes, we have already talked about the different sources of error which may affect the internal validity and external validity. Before we go into in detail about the ways we can control the, the or put the check on the sources of error, let us see some of the purpose. Why do we use the control? As per Van Dalen in 1973, control or the check on the sources of errors are done to achieve isolation, to, to have an isolated relationship, uh, um, a firm relationship between independent variable and the dependent variable to have isolated to have exact relationship between independent variable and the dependent variable number two to achieve changes in magnitude during experimental research whatever uh, changes that happens in independent variable that impact can be seen in the dependent variable so not only to see the change but also to see how much the, uh, there is an impact or effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable to ascertain how much effect independent variable contributes to the dependent variable is also one of the reason uh, the controls or the checks are done in experimental research and number three reason is, is to achieve quantitative evaluation not only to find the difference or of changes between the independent and dependent variable but whether the difference or the relationship between the dependent and independent variable may be positive or negative. So there are different kinds of different types of control, methods of control. Number one, the first and very common and very widely used in experimental research is random assignment of subject to groups. As we already know, the, the typical experimental research have two groups, control group and experimental group. So these two groups are there. And we already know if we have a differential selection of subjects, if we, if we, if we select the subjects in a biased manner in experimental group and control group, then it will affect the validity of experimental research. To avoid the impact in the internal validity, uh, one of the method is random assignment. Randomly male, female, students from high, low intelligence, we randomly select and put them one in experimental group, the others in control group. We randomly, we randomly select students and, uh, and assign them into experimental group and the control group. In this way, each unit that we select have the equal probability of being selected and being, and being assigned in either of the group. So there will be no biasness. In this way, uh, the, in this way, the maturation, in this way, the history, the other factors, intelligence, the other factors which may affect the, the, the experimental research will be controlled to a large extent. So first is random assignment. Number two, matching subjects with random assignment. Match the subject in extraneous variable and then assign them randomly into uh, to any of the two groups. Massing, matching procedure, researcher has to decide which matching procedure is a feasible in a particular situation. So matching subjects also are of different different can be done in different ways. Number one is procedure of subject-subject matching. So what do we do is that 
we know that there are some extraneous variables which may affect, affect the experimental research. For example, socioeconomic status. So we match two subjects from a average same socioeconomic status. Select these two, put them one in experimental group, other in control group. Next two with from a same average socioeconomic status. Put them one in control group, one in experimental group. So we randomly, after selecting, we randomly put into one in control group, one experimental group. This is also widely used as a matching, as a procedure for controlling extraneous variable. So whatever the extraneous variable which is affecting our experimental research will be controlled in a large extent. However, the difficulty is that it is possible to match subjects in one variable, but when it becomes matching in two variables or more variables, then matching becomes difficult. Next is matching for mean and SD. In order to overcome a problem of subject to subject matching, groups can be matched. When we cannot do subject to subject matching, so groups can be matched on a relevant variable on the basis of standard mean and standard deviation. A test may be conducted and in a group of a group of learners. So students belonging to the average mean may be selected, okay, and the extreme cases may be left out and from the average mean, having an average mean, they may be uh, selected, matched and put one in other control group, one in the experimental group. Example, IQ, SES, achievement motivation scores may, may be analyzed and uh, those having the same mean and standard deviation of the scores on a selected test may be selected, they matched and then assigned in either of the control group and the experimental group. Another is, another way of matching is ranking of subject and a matching variable. Whatever variable that you want to match and which, is disturb, which may disturb the relationship between uh, independent variable and dependent variable. So what we do is that we conduct a test and uh, based on the scores, we place all available subjects uh, learners in a rank order from highest to lowest or lowest or highest on the basis of the score on the matching variable. So first two subjects, first two subjects learners are selected from the rank order and one is put in external uh, control group, another is put in the uh, in the experimental group and randomly. Similarly, the next pair is selected and assigned in one of the group as a control, either in control group and in the experimental group. So in this way also, to a large extent, the extraneous variable will be controlled. To a large extent, the variable which may affect the, uh, the, the intervening variable and the dependent variable will be controlled. So first we talked about the random assignment. Second, we talked about the matching number three is holding intervening variable constant so whichever variable may affect and we think may affect our experimental research we can hold it we can hold it constant for example if gender is a variable that may affect our dependent variable then we can select the subjects of a particular gender only then the question of gender will be completely removed or if it is socioeconomic status is a variable that may affect our dependent variable, then we will select the subjects within the restricted range of the effects of socioeconomic status of a restricted range, maybe average or whatever below average, whichever is applicable for our research, and so that the issue of socioeconomic status will not arise. And the fourth one is subject himself or herself are used as control. First experiment is conducted, then after a gap, experiment was conducted. However, this, this uh, uh, method of control is not encouraged because uh, of using a human for, for, more, for experiments uh, is not encouraged and it also 
uh, um, the, the individual may have fatigue by going through experiment after experiment and other interferences effect which cannot be partial or completely. There may be other effect of memory effect and other effects and also the issue of human rights issues may also arise. However, theoretically this um, uh, method of control is also there. The fifth method of control is method of counterbalancing. So how do you do counterbalance? Is that when we the, the the based on the number of treatment that we have, same number of groups will be there. If there are two two treatment, treatment meaning teaching treatment two, treatment one is teaching with technology, treatment two is teaching in traditional method is rotated amongst the various group to treatment two groups so when it is rotated the impact of one treatment by the other treatment is counterbalanced it is it helps in controlling sequencing or carryover effect that arise when a group is exposed to multiple treatment so in this way also we use we can control the extraneous variable which may affect our our the effect the internal validity of experimental research. So what are the different methods of control? We talked about the random assignment which is widely used and encouraged. Then we use matching. Then we used uh, holding the intervening variable constant, uh, using subject themselves as the control and the counterbalancing method. These are the different methods and I already said we need to select the method which is of control which is appropriate as required for our experiment. Thank you.